What's going on, folks? You got Lawrence Young here with Fantastic Forum, and I have the privilege to be sitting here at Comic Con 2014 with Mr. Paul Tobin. How are you, good sir? I'm very good today. Thank you for taking the time. We really do appreciate it. Uh, look, it's fun, man. Uh, Doing stuff like this is cool as hell. Well, look, I I'm I'm glad that you're. No, you can you can speak freely. Is all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feel feel free. And it's like you know, I mean, I agree. It it is Comic Con is definitely fun, but dude. You're a busy guy. You're you're working on like everything. Yeah, but it's like uh, being this busy. It's like a musician on stage when you're when you have all the energy, of the crowd coming at you. It's it's fantastic. And I got to think those guys must go backstage and just crash too, which is what I've been doing at the hotel at night. But yeah, it's been it's been just a wonderful experience. It's like we you know we were chatting just before we started the interview, and you're working on on almost a dozen projects <laughs> like how, how do you manage your workload like that when when you're writing uh, it's all crisis management really it's like what <laughs> what what fire needs to be put out right now um, combined with a little bit of uh, of uh, what do I feel like working on each day because it, you know, each day you need to like really keep the energy up um, but it's tough because like I've started working in novels right now and it's like this transition is like really weird for me and not transition because I'm not leaving comics by any means I love comics way too much but like, great <laughs> but um, like in comics you can be working on a comic and it's out three months later right. um, but like this book series I'm working on right now uh, the novel that I'm working on right now won't be out till 2018 wow. so, it's, so it's tough it's tough to sit down and go this needs to be done right now because there's only what four more years uh, <laughs> Screw it, video games. I'm gonna just play, you know, drink whiskey and play video games all day long. You, know? yeah, you, you, need, you need to work it. Word, word. Now, so, uh, you know, we're here in the Dark Horse booth. I know one of the books you got coming out for Dark Horse is uh, The Witcher. What, can you tell us a little bit about, like, I mean, I know it's based on the video game. Uh, tell us about what it is that your book is gonna be talking about in that world. Well, we wanted to, to strip it way down. Like when we started, when we decided to do The Witcher, it was like, well, what um, the games and especially the novels are this vast political machination and things are happening like that. And we decided that's too much. That's okay. just too much to put into comics. Um, so actually, it's just stripped down to basically Geralt himself on a on a little adventure. Because um, we. Uh, one of the things that I love in all my projects, I'm, I'm a characterization guy, and that's what I like about Geralt, the, the Witcher, um, is that he has this like dual nature of grim but wry humor and things like that. So really, I just wanted to put him in a situation where he could interact with both uh, other, with humans, monsters, and mystery. I just wanted this, you know, big melu that could could kind of happen. Um, but uh, CD Projekt Red, who uh, do the games. They actually didn't want me to put much more than that in, um, just because of the aspect of, of people. We didn't want people to come to the comic having necessary, having needed to read all the previous material, played the games and things like that. So it's Geralt stripped down to just his best. Cool. And so uh, I understand that you're saying like they they didn't want you to include a lot, but there's still. I mean, it's a it's a big world. How do you decide if you're even if you're going to strip it down? How do you decide what to put in and what to leave out? Um, well, I know that I wanted the mystery and I wanted the world because I love the world of The Witcher so much that um, that we do use like actual set pieces and things like that. But um, yeah, but there were so many characters that we we give some hints on because he's like on a on a major quest. If you if you played the games or read the novels, then you know his really sort of relationship with the bad girlfriend Yennefer. Um, um, is a part of it, um, so we couldn't. Re we didn't want to remove him from that because that's part of his character. Um, so, uh, just as many, you know, we wanted a, a fast, lean machine, um, and we didn't include too much more than that. And then, as far as like for background purposes, I mean, did you actually just go back and like read the novels and play the games or all that, or is, it, or is that something you're doing anyway? Um, I'd already played the games. Uh, one of the things that was great about getting the job is um, the Witcher novels, which I adore. Um, I think there's two available in America, but there's like nine. Oh, wow. um, and a lot of people don't know that because they just haven't been translated. Um, but in order to get into the character for me, they said, hey, we'll just bring in a guy and translate all the novels for you so you can read them. So I have all of the novels in English, which was nice. and, and really <laughs> nicely translated. So I got to feel like extremely special, and, you know, and like my friends that know Geralt and The Witcher, I can say, well, have you read this one particular novel? And they're like, is that in English? And oh, well, 
just for me. Right, right. <laughs> for some people. <laughs> Special people. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I got to know him better that way. Very cool, very cool. You also uh, have Prometheus coming up, huh? So can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, the process of it or what it's about? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. What is, what is it going to end up being about? Well, uh, I can't tell too much of the plot, unfortunately, because the plot is really inherent on... No problem, take your time. Like, it's day four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what we've done is we're, we're combining the worlds of Prometheus, Predator, um, Aliens, and then Aliens versus Predator. I know that kind of seems like if you have Aliens and Predator, it's already in there. But like those four properties into uh, sort of one mega series. Right. I don't like to consider it a mega series that much because you can read each of the four arcs um, independently. Just a shared universe. Yeah, a shared universe, universe. But in some ways, like my book, the launch title, Prometheus, which I'm doing with uh, Juan Ferreira, the same artist that I do with my uh, creator-owned folder series with, um, we have the launch title, and most of what happens, the characters and things like that that springboard into the others, kind of gets set up in that, even though our story is um, um, a pretty cut and dried start to finish anyway. Um, but we have, uh, we have Prometheus with me and Juan Ferreira, and then uh, my friend Chris, uh, Chris Roberson is writing Alien. Um, Joss Williamson is writing Predator, and Chris Sebola is writing Aliens vs. Predator. And then we're we sort of close the whole series. We have what we're calling an Omega series, which is going to be a, a big, fat one-shot. And we brought in Kelly Sue DeConnick to, to write that. Yeah, Very she's nice. been great. Um, and all five of the writers that I just mentioned mm -hmm. live, in, live in Portland, Oregon. Oh, um, wow. We're I didn't realize all, you yeah, guys are all right there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're with editor Scott Alley. And the reason we did that is so we could all just, like, wander over to his house and have summit meetings. Yeah. You know, or, you know, in some cases, just, like, m I'll call up ex-cop Chris mm -hmm. Sebola mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and say, you know, can we can we just get together at a bar? I'll buy you a couple of drinks, and I'll convince you that my story idea is the best, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um things like that so yeah we had like maybe 10 summit meetings to sort of get these stories um, the way we wanted um, you know sort of some of them were very cordial and some of them you know the, <laughs> the table would kind of almost flip over um, <laughs> but yeah and it was a great process because I've always been my whole life I've been a, a writer that gets an idea and then goes to the darkest corner I can find and writes alone and you know nobody pissed me off nobody say anything um, so I wasn't quite sure how it would work for me Gotcha. Um, but luckily, uh, all these guys are my personal friends, and it, and it felt really good. Um, it's it's hard. Uh, I'm very protective of my stories, mm -hmm. but almost instantly it was like, you, you know, why protect my story when Chris Sibola is saying, I like that, but wouldn't it be better if, and, and you know, 90% of the time it would be like, yeah, that would be better. Mm -hmm. And not only would it be better, but it's still going to be my name on the credits. So I just look, <laughs> I look better, you know? <laughs> it's like, like Tobin came up with that great idea, and I can just go, yeah, that was me. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a great process. That's good stuff, man. I'm, I'm really excited for that entire line, and, you know, I, I can't wait yeah. to partake. We're excited by it, too. And, I, and it's great working with Juan Ferreira. Um, he's just a fantastic. You know, I got to know him working on the um, – our first stuff together was Falling Skies, mm. um, which we, we had a lot of fun with, but then we did our creator own series, Colder, um, which we're gonna do more of. Um, and he just, something about him, just like, it was like one of those like moments of transcending and going above and beyond. And since then, I, we have so many things together. Like at one point I was, I was, uh, I thought of another thing that I wanted to do with him. And I'm like, oh, I'll talk to him about that. And then I like sat down at my schedule and I'm like, Oh, right now I have Juan penned in for the next 670 pages that he draws. <laughs> so it's going to be kind of tough to go to a guy and say, yeah. you know, when you're through with those 670 pages, <laughs> I got this idea. <laughs> you know, so, so we'll see what's next. Cool. So you've been working in the industry for a little bit now. It's like I just wanted to find out from you, from your perspective, what is, what is your favorite thing or the thing you like most about the current state of comic books? The, the breadth of it, because um, like all throughout the 90s, I ran a comic book store, and it, like like if someone came in and said, you know, I want such and such book, I would say, is that a superhero book? Because if it's not, that's really all we got, you know? Um, but, but man, there's so many companies now that are doing, and it was something that I was very aware of all throughout my life, is that in American comics, it was like primarily superheroes. Mm -hmm. Um, where the, the European and the Japanese, there was just like this whole range of stuff 
where where the way I saw it is like some of the European and Japanese saw comics as a medium. Um, yeah. um, in America, superheroes was seen as the medium. If you're doing a if you're doing a comic, you know, then then it's a superhero, and it's like right. no, that's a genre. It's just a genre of it. Right. Um, but now, if you want like horror or or anything, you know, like. Like I'm debuting a graphic novel here at San Diego called "I Was the Cat" with um, artist Benjamin Dewey, and it's a story about a talking cat, you know. And it's like <laughs> you couldn't get that in the '90s and things like that. Um, and I'm a guy that likes to write a wide range of things, so it's really fantastic to me to see like, like IDW boom, dynamite. Yeah. Even Archie yeah. is, a, is a company that's suddenly taking vast amounts of chances and, and expanding their field. I right. love I love what Archie's been doing lately. Um, Especially like afterlife with Archie, with my friend um, Francesco Francavilla, um, and it's like, it's like this is crazy. There's all this cool stuff, you yeah. know, and 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 I think that's important because I mean we're we're individuals, and, right. and like if like if I came to you today and I said, tell me what your favorite song of all time is, and you would hem and haw and maybe come up with it. Yeah. And then if I came to you tomorrow and said, tell me what your favorite song is, it might be completely different. That's and true. It might be a completely different you know field of music, and right. it's like. And I think that's important that that comics recognizes that 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 there's this audience that wants a wide range of things, and not only just like wants the the audience has expanded too. Mm -hmm. So it's like working together. So I think that's what I've really I like. I grew up. Uh, I grew up. I'm a huge comic book collector. Um, like if you go to my my house, yeah. which is guarded with a huge bad dog so don't go to my house <laughs> um, there's like you know an Avengers 1 Hulk 1 wow. X-Men 1 all, all that stuff is laying around and um, Fantastic Four 1 I, I love that stuff and then there's piles of Golden Age comics wow. I love Golden Age comics um, and you know uh, so growing up as a collector I was always hearing this term Golden Age you know, like yeah. the 40s were the Golden Age of comics and, right. but lately I'm like screw it we're, yeah. the, we're the Golden Age of comics yeah. now. it's, it's it's tons better now, and it's just yeah. like the field is so wonderful now. So that's the main thing for me. Okay, and then the flip side of that, what is it that you miss about the days gone by and as far as comments are concerned? Is there anything that, you know, you kind of think back and long for? Um, well, the one thing that I think I really miss, and, and, and it's getting sort of um, not as bad because of the Internet age, but um, back in the golden age of comics in the <laughs> 1940s, there were all these comic book studios. So the guys would come into work and they would, you know, work in this like comic book environment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was a huge plus because look, uh, every creator, and this kind of cycles back to why I liked working with um, the other writers, um, with the Prometheus thing is we all have flaws, we all have weaknesses. And back in the, the studio days, like if you were a guy that just could not draw feet, you would like, <laughs> you know, you you would go, eh, so-and-so, that artist, he knows how to draw feet, and yeah. you could, you know, talk to him. Or, or one guy just cannot draw a horse, you know. Horses are tough, by the way. Yeah, yeah they are tough. Um, and, and, but they could sort of collaborate, and it was like, it was like not only working, it was like not only going to work, but it was going to school as yeah. well. And the artists would sort of get raised from that. But mm -hmm. the studios went away, and um, um, I belong to a Periscope studio in Portland, which I think is the biggest studio um, in comics. Oh, wow. Um, um, so I, it was the isolation um, that, that was problematic. But, you know, really now, now to a certain extent, we're not isolated because we have, you know, Skype and, and all right. these ways to do it. But there's still a little problem of, um, of like, being isolated from the crap. Even if you've yeah. been, even if you're tweeting to a friend constantly, he's he's not looking over your shoulder and saying, "Well, you didn't draw the weight on that woman, right?" You know, um, like I know, uh, like a lot of people, like guy artists tend to draw um, when they um, they are raised to know how to draw a guy in a suit, basically. Where a lot of um, female artists like to draw girls, mm -hmm. and then they start to. Um, like my, I'll use Colleen Coover, my wife, as an example. She loved drawing girls all her life, and then we started working professionally, and suddenly she needed to draw a guy in a suit. Mm -hmm. A guy in a suit has an entirely different weight, right? You right. Know? So she would draw these guys who, who, if they existed, <laughs> it standing would topple right over because <laughs> the weights were in the wrong thing. Uh -huh. But in the studio format, 
you know, working together in studio, you learn that. You have people looking over your shoulder. Um, yeah. Steve Lieber is, is part of our studio, and he's he's great for just like looking over your shoulder and going, nope, you know, and then <laughs> and then he'll he'll change things. But at the same time, he has some flaws that I won't point out on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you know what they are. Um, and Colleen and Dylan Maconis and some of the women artists will come over and say, you know, girls have more than one fashion. You know, well, I guess I just did point out one of the problems, so <laughs> there it is. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's the camaraderie, um, camaraderie of the craft. It's great. Paul, thank you so much, man, for being a part, taking the time to talk to us. Uh, it's, it's Paul Topin, and he does, he's coming out with The Witcher, down the road, Prometheus, and he has a whole bunch of other books that he, he does as well. So look for Paul Topin's name and go buy those books right now. Thanks again, man.